any others? Any other court requests? There was a lot of family members left and right. Yeah. I just, um, I just pray that we all, uh, I just pray that we all, uh, we all got to go sometime. I mean, there's a lot of small talk. I just pray that we all uh, go to the right place. And they will come to another world first. Yeah. Yeah.
verse 27. Verse 27. St. John chapter 14, verse 27. Amen? And we're going to have a say amen. 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 St. John chapter 14, verse 27. And it says here, the promise of the comforter. Peace I leave with you, and my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, but I give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And that's the promising of the comforter. Because Jesus is equipping 12 apostles. Uh, John is one of the apostles that is writing this book. And he's writing with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He said among 12, the brotherhood. We, we in Pentecost call that the brotherhood, which is actually the 12 apostles sitting on teachings among Jesus Christ. And he's taking spiritual notes in flight, how the ministry is supposed to go forth. But Jesus came to pour into them, impart unto them, and teach them. And he's also, he taught them character, how to walk in the love of God, walk in signs and wonders and miracles. He also taught them how to deal with people who are crippled, who are lame. So even in ministry, that part of ministry can be very difficult. But they still walk in love because Jesus Christ himself is love. And he taught them how to walk in love. You have to have character when you're in the ministry. You're dealing with a lot of personalities and different types of people. Amen? So that's how John wrote this. And he wrote it back in 80-95 AD where Judah and Jerusalem why Jesus is preparing to leave the scene and imparting his anointing upon twelve. Judas was not there. He was already plunged back and took his own life because he betrayed Jesus for um, 30 pieces of silver. But he was replaced by a man named Matthias. You don't hear much about him, but he, you can't be replaced in the ministry. A man named Matthias replaced him. He was replaced. When you start doing things that are fraudulent and start allowing money and greed to get into you, you're going to betray people. Say I'm getting ready to build a new sanctuary. This place will be packed. Mm -hmm. But there's always a Judas in the mix. There's always a Judas. Mm -hmm. And how did Jesus do this? He did a lot of teaching. A lot of teaching. A good teaching. And it's good to sit about the leadership who can teach you. There's a lot of people who call to preach, but it's the teaching that gets your attention. And when people are teaching, you must have a listening ear. Mm -hmm. I set up on the leader named Apostle Robert F. Sanders. He could preach with the best of them. But when he started to teach, I began to understand the teachings. And the apostle is one who is a good listener. Mm -hmm. They don't say much. They just sit and they listen. And being a good listener is becoming wise. You can be a wise person in this day to be full of wisdom. Amen? Amen. A good teaching. Um, but as we deal with the word weather the storm, the word peace, you must also have peace of mind if you're in Christ. God wants you to have peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Not worry, not fret, not be fearful, but peace of mind. I believe we read last week, Philippians 4 and 7, the peace of God that surpasses my own understanding in our minds and work in our heart. When you are Christ, you have no business to work. Somebody told me years ago, why pray if you won't work? Where is that peace? He wants you to be at peace of mind as you follow him. Mm -hmm. Galatians, uh, you know, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 deals with we are made in the image and in the likeness of them. But also, when you are made in that image, you still have to have peace. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Take notes. Because God has given you dominion, power, and authority. And in between that, you still have to have peace while you're following who? God. That's from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. But there's another text that we're going to deal with. Uh, Isaiah 26, verse number 3. Isaiah 26. The book of Isaiah. 
Old Testament. 26. Oh, yeah. Very familiar scripture. And this is how God wants our mind to be. So when you're going through a storm, He wants you to have peace. And peace of mind. Mm-hmm. And we're going to go back to St. John in a minute. But I want to hit this and I want you to understand this. Isaiah 26, verse number 3. And it says here, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Your trust should not be in people. Your trust should be in the Lord. So if you're in the Lord, your mind should be at total peace. But we have to remember this. At times, we do waver in our faith. We do waver because we're human. We are human, but yet we're divinely called. There's days when you feel peace, and there's days, some of y'all go to work in the morning, you can tell when it's going to be a bad day. And that had nothing to do with the sunshine or the rain. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's people who come in our lives and bring unnecessary distractions. And that should cause you to sit down and pray and say, you know what, God, I need some peace today. God wants us to have our mind at total peace. Not worry about people, not worry about the position, not worry about our co-workers. You pray for those people. But he wants us to be at peace. Mm-hmm. And some people do come to distract your peace. Mm-hmm. When you see certain people come, you're like, oh, man, here they come. <laughs> people call you. Oh, no, they did not. You tell people you go to bed at some time, they call at the exact time. I done got so keen, I take the phone and put it next to the bed and I turn it off. Because yeah. I don't feel like hearing all that mess. Don't let everybody speak into your life and don't let somebody distract your peace. You're never supposed to do that. If Jesus Christ is in you and he is, you're never supposed to let anybody take your peace. Like I was on my way up here and somebody said they were coming. They're not here. I can't let that distract me. We already know who the Lord is. That's why we're here. Amen? Amen. I don't care who come or go. God gave me an opportunity to speak peace to this situation. Somebody else would have packed it and said, I can't do this no more. I quit. And they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. But you can't focus on people. Your central attention should be on Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Uh, dealing with this again, Isaiah 26, verse number 3. Now, this is what it reads here. And I like to read a lot so I can teach you. As they were trying to be in stressful, days of the end of history occur. God will keep perfect peace to the remnant who remain steadfast and faithful to their lives. Mm-hmm. In times of trouble, we must continually strive to keep our minds turned to the Lord in prayer, trust, and hope. Three keys. Prayer, hope, and trust. As we go through, because we are living in the last days, the days of Timothy, where men should be lovers of themselves, proud, boasters, heady, high-minded, full of flesh. Don't let that distract you. Your main word should be what? Prayer. Trust and hope. You must have a prayer life as a Christian. You should also trust in who? The Lord. And your hope is in who? Jesus Christ. God is only allowing you to see what's in their hearts. They don't have any peace. There's days when we wake up and you just sit up for a while and just thanking God because you got what? Peace. And that anointing to start flowing through the whole house. People call you, you feel nothing but peace. But as we live in these last days, don't let what you see out here distract you. Trust in the Lord. Mm-hmm. We must place our trust in him because he is our what? Rock. He's a what? Firm foundation. The chief cornerstone. The Messiah and the Manishka. Our peace comes from him. Some of us have good friends that come with peace. You know, some of us got good people that's in our lives and don't bring no drama. But they always bring you peace. Whether they bring you some change to be a blessing to you 
Okay, cool, shake your hand, hug you. That's peace. That's the natural part. But God always wants us to be at peace. Mm-hmm. You got co-workers that are nice to you, always saying a kind word. Mm-hmm. You should always have those type of steps around you. When people keep bringing trauma, shut that off. Because you don't need that type of tension in your life. And then not to be funny, sometimes your own family can be your worst enemies. Mm-hmm. That one that gossip who they drinking, they tell all the family secrets. That ain't no peace. That's mess. And do the type of people you need to leave alone. A person always borrowing, borrowing, borrowing from you and don't pay it back. Let them go. That ain't no peace. That's confusion. That one person that comes to you always lying. For everybody's business, but they own. That's strife. Get them type of spirits away from you. There's too much tension. You ever seen a person who always having migraine headaches? That's a lot of pressure. Ain't no peace in there. And there's no cure for migraine headaches. There's too much tension going on in their mind. But I pray that their mind be in who? Christ. So he can heal their mind. Their mind is in total chaos. And God don't want us worrying. Threatening people, being threatened by folks. He want us to be at what? Peace. Amen? And it says here, uh, he, Jesus is our rock. He endures forever. He is a sure, firm foundation. There's a lot of ground. There's a lot of floors. These are tiles, but they're firm. They have substance. Wow. Outside of this building is concrete. That's a firm foundation. But oftentimes, concrete has cracks. Where they have to hammer it down, smooth it over, and, and, re- and do that foundation again. When you enter to the Lord, Jesus Christ, when you walk on the grounds, like Moses said, God, these grounds that I stand on is what? Holy. The psalmist said he is the chief cornerstone. There's no cracks in Jesus. There's many stones, but he is the chief cornerstone. There's no cracks in his presence. Everything he does, he does it in love. But oftentimes, he does it with peace. When he taught the 12 disciples, well, last week we talked about that. Weather the storm, part one. Here we are on part two. But with peace of mind. When he seen that they were troubled because he was sleeping, they woke up because they were troubled about the storm. He stood up and spoke to the wind, and the wind obeyed. That's a powerful stuff. What manner of man is this, they said, that even the wind obey him. Look who his father is. God, who made the wind, who made the earth, who made the water. But yet he had that same ability to speak, and the wind obey him. That's how God wants us to carry ourselves as Christians. Whatever storms we're going through, sometimes the Lord will tell you, oh, well, this storm won't be here a while. And you got to weather that. But then sometimes God will tell you, listen, I want you to get up and fast and pray for three days so we can weather this storm. God will give you that ability to speak to that storm and that wind has to obey. Amen? That's how God wants us to be. I was on the elevator yesterday and I thought the elevator was getting stuck. I said, no, we didn't play that game today. Not today. Uh-huh. I stumbled up on the elevator and said, peace! And the elevator shut all the way through and went back up to the fifth floor. Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. You ain't going to run me crazy. I ain't talking to you. You ain't going to play that game. Uh-huh. But Grandma, you were about to get upset with you. I said, no, I don't let my emotions go that high. You have a way of controlling your own emotions. You don't understand that. When people come through emotional trauma, you have the ability to shut that off. Because God wants his children at peace. He wants his children at peace. He don't want us to worry for nothing. Mm-hmm. Your peace should always be in God. And how to set up your day of peace? With prayer, study of the word. Seeking his face and coming away from things that cause havoc. Sometimes we allow too many people in our circle. Mm-hmm. You can tell, and sometimes you can feel the warfare, the heaviness, the struggle of what they bring. I got a relative you know, every time you come around, I'm like, ah, here you come. <laughs> One time I ran another way, Reverend Newman. 
Yes. 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 God shut people out your life. He don't want you to be a Bible in their emotions. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you about the principles of having peace of mind, even in your storms. That's what I'm talking about this morning. Whether well, the storm part two, but peace of mind. <coughs> Is our peace challenged? <coughs> yes. But mm -hmm. well, you're going to be challenged in this morning. The deacons who does everything. But anyway, yeah. Is your peace challenged? Yes. Will people come up against you? Yes. How do you do it? When people come at you for them, get down on your knees and just start praying. God will move out every stumbling block and every hindrance out your way. Whether it's at the home, whether it's on the job, whether it's in school, God will to move people out your way. And then whisper to you and tell them, don't bring them back. Not that God is being mean or selfish. Certain people God does not want in your life while you're going through your storms. Mm -hmm. While you're going through your storms, it'll break you, it'll hurt you, but you still come out victorious. Mm -hmm. You can't walk with everybody. And everybody don't want to be loved. Some people just want to take from you. Have you ever been around people who drained your spirit? Get away from those type of people. Mm -hmm. Get away from those type of people that's draining you. Trying to sift the oil out of your life. Because we all that are believers have a certain amount of oil that's in our lives. When I mean oil, the anointing. The calling that's on our lives. God don't want you around a lot of foolishness if you say you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be at peace, even in our thinking, even about our own self. If Jesus Christ think well of you, he wants you to think well of yourself as, as well. Stop downing yourself. Put yourself down. Some of us have grown up around people who said, you'll never be nothing and we ain't nothing. But when you accept the Christ, Christ don't think evil of his own believers or his children. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 says, They in all things we are more than conquerors. That's Apostle Paul talking to the Roman church. But Apostle Paul was giving them Wisdom. Learn to think well of yourself. Don't let somebody always put you down. Verbal abuse is worse than the physical. What am I saying? When you're going through your storms, don't put yourself down. Because when that storm is over, God will elevate you. God will promote you. Psalm 75 verse 8 says, uh, promotion does not come from man, but it comes from God. Only God can promote you in your storm. And your storms is to help you and others who are going through like you've gone through. Your life is not just for you. Your life is for other people who are young believers in Christ. But in St. John 14 and, and number 16 or 27, still deals with about the peace of God. As Jesus prepares to leave the scene, he's taught them signs and wonders. He taught them miracles. He taught them how to tap into the oil of the anointing. He taught them how to seek him because as we prepare to leave, he equipped 12 disciples or apostles, and then they all, all together, they taught 52 other believers the same gifting. So as believers, God's peace is always with us. The word Jehovah Shalom means the God of peace. He wants us to always have peace of mind, peace in our spirit. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be at total peace when we get up and when we lay down. And you need the comforter to have the peace of God. Which is the comforter is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need the infilling of the Holy Ghost. If you've been born once, you have to be born again. I believe of Jesus Christ. And when you are born again, you accept that peace. Mm -hmm. God wants to his children to be at peace. No more, no less. But he also promised to give us the comforter. Mm -hmm. The comforter. Here it is, 26 says, the comforter is identified here as the Holy Ghost. Christians 
And the most important thing about the Spirit is not His power. Acts chapter number 1, verse number 8. You can write that down. But that He is holy. His character is holy along with the manifestation of the holy character in our lives as believers is what matters the most. We must have holy character while we're going through our storms. Mm -hmm. Holy character. Make sure you have Christ-like character. Don't come tell me you're gifted and you're anointed and you're going through your storms, but your attitude is next. It's a bad thing to say you're a Christian and going through storms and your attitude is nasty. That's bad. That don't look right. That's what you're doing. You're misleading the people. Your character and your gifting have to be at the same two levels. Something in you has to die daily. Even while you're going through your storms. Amen? You have to have holy character. I'm going to turn to two more scriptures and then we're going to close. Romans chapter number one, verse number four. Romans chapter number one.
the peace of God. Peace rules over your finances, your relationships, your home, your ministry, your mind, your body, your spirit, the community, your job, your storms, your situations, family. Speak with authority and use that which God has given you in the Holy Ghost. And watch, there are going to be some changes. The Bible says, call those things that be not as though they are. Romans 1 7. Speak with authority. Don't speak all oh, soft and gentle. Oh, Father, I need help. God, help me today. My mama said, God don't like a coward soldier. Told me that as a little boy. She said, You understand it when you get older. She said, When you become a believer, you understand what I'm telling you. That means you have to have steel in your back be able to stand against any storms. Amen? God ain't using nobody soft and gentle. He's looking for people that have thick skin. And it takes years to get that when you become a believer. Amen? You got, you got to go through these storms. Most of all, love God with your whole heart. And ask him, God, what is there? Is there I heard you pray this morning. Lord, what is your will for me this morning? Which storm is this that is coming? What demons are this that's coming after? God will sit there and show you what you're getting ready to go through. I don't care what nobody tells you. A man can never tell you that. But God himself will tell you what you're getting ready to go through. And tell you to call it out and watch them devils back up. He's going to tell you the truth. God I've never known God to tell a lie. Neither is he the son of man that he needs to repent about anything. But he wants us to weather the storm and have peace of mind. I pray that the word has been a blessing to you this morning. You don't take our day to preach. I know some people who will preach two or three hours. I'm not with that. You're going to have me in the church for two or three hours. Okay. I will put my finger up and walk straight to the door. And I have done it. Professor, we ain't finished where I am. Have a good day. <laughs> uh -huh. My first bishop told me. Years ago, Bishop Apostle Robert L. Sanders, he said, Randy, if you ever go into pastor, don't hold the people all day. He said, don't you do that. He said, you'll run the people away if you do that. And they only gonna remember 30% of what you taught them. Deacon Mr. Robert, would you be so kind and close us out? In the word of prayer, you can stay right there.